So hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the 2023 I Partner With My Public Library uh, Awards Ceremony. This is an award celebrating community collaborators. Uh, and my name is Dr. Noah Lindstra. Uh, I'm an associate professor here at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, and I also want to introduce Chloe Lanham, uh, who is in the chat, um, and Chloe will be available to help you um, if you have any technical issues, just uh, direct message Chloe. Uh, but I want to just uh, start with uh, our agenda for today. We'll, we'll start by doing some quick welcome and introductions, and then we'll have some brief remarks by Mr. Austin Butner, um, who I'll be introducing in a minute, um, but is one of our award winners. Uh, we will then uh, announce the 2023 uh, awardees um, and close with a call to join us uh, again in 2024 and beyond. So just uh, to introduce us, uh, and again, I uh, would encourage everyone to introduce yourself uh, in the chat. Um, uh, this, this effort really began uh, in, in a way during the presidency of uh, Barack Obama, uh, who when for, former First Lady Michelle Obama started an initiative some of you may be familiar with called Let's Move. Um, and the idea behind Let's Move was really harnessing uh, the totality of the federal government um, and really fostering collaborations across different units of government, um, including the Institute of Museum and Library Services, uh, to support whole, whole child and family health um, through the power of partnership. And Let's Move in Libraries is an initiative that I started in 2016 um, really to continue this work of fostering multi-sector collaboration, uh, in particular to support community health um, through our website, our monthly newsletter, uh, active social media channels, um, uh, HEAL at the Library Toolkit, um, and a new initiative focused on fostering safe routes to libraries uh, in collaboration with the Safe Routes Partnership, America Walks, the League of American Bicyclists, uh, the Urban Libraries Council, and the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. We really seek to, to imagine what may be possible when, when public librarians uh, collaborate with partners. Um, and we know that the sky is the limit. Um, and you all know that as well. Um, and so everything that we do is open access, including our logo. Um, and I just want to give a thanks to these intrepid uh, public librarians in Georgia, um, who took our uh, the logo and printed it on t-shirts and banners. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, being part of this. Um, and as this project has developed and grown over the last eight years, um, we have really noticed that there's kind of a gap in our national infrastructure relating to uh, the power of community partnerships uh, to public librarianship. Uh, we also acknowledge uh, and have learned from uh, other national library awards, including most notably the Urban Libraries Council's uh, Annual Innovations Award uh, and the American Library Association's I Love My Librarian Award both of which are models uh, of how annual awards programs can not only celebrate the incredible things that libraries and library workers do, these annual awards programs can also help us better understand as well as advocate for um, the work of public librarianship. And the idea of a national award to advocate for and to understand the critical importance of community partnerships uh, to the work of public librarianship grew out of a three-year project we completed in August of 2023, focused on cultivating uh, the relationship-driven library. Uh, the idea being that to support community health, um, we have to be working in collaboration with others who care about the health of our communities. And so we want to thank all of you for your commitment uh, to the idea of partnership. Um, uh, and we are so excited to celebrate all that you have accomplished uh, both today um, in this ceremony, as well as in perpetuity uh, on the I Partner with My Public Library webpage uh, located on the Let's Move in Library website. And before we begin to celebrate uh, the 2023 awardees, um, I want to quickly uh, introduce uh, Mr. Austin Butner, who has very graciously um, uh, shared some remarks. Uh, uh, and I just want to introduce uh, Mr. Butner. Um, 
He has demonstrated an extraordinary commitment uh, to making Los Angeles, as, as well as the nation, a better place to live, in particular for families and their children in low-income communities. Mr. Butner has served as the superintendent of the Los Angeles Unified School District, the publisher of the Los Angeles Times and the San Diego Union Tribune, uh, and he has been the first deputy mayor of Los Angeles. Um, uh, and he also founded Vision to Learn, which is an organization that provides free eyeglasses to children in low-income communities across the, the country, including through public library partnerships. Um, so Vision to Learn is a nonprofit charity um, founded in 2012 by Mr. Butner and the Butner Family Foundation. The program has helped children in more than 750 low-income communities in 15 states, as well as the District of Columbia. Uh, and Vision to Learn serves the needs of the hardest to reach children. About 90% of kids served by Vision to Learn uh, live in poverty, and about 85% are Black and Latino. Vision to Learn has helped ensure more than 2.6 million children have received a vision screening uh, at no cost um, and has provided more than 400,000 children with classes, um, again, all at no cost. Um, and so if you'd like to learn more about uh, Vision to Learn uh, and Mr. Butner's work, um, please visit www.visiontolearn.org. And with that, I'm going to bring up Mr. Butner's remarks. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. And it's my pleasure to be with all of you uh, today uh, to talk a little bit about the work of Vision to Learn, in particular, how our library partners play such an essential role in helping us provide service to kids who might otherwise go without. Uh, Vision Learn is founded with a simple mission to make sure children have the glasses they need to succeed in school and in life. When a child comes to school and they're hungry, we'll feed them. They come to school, we'll make sure they have the textbooks, school materials that they need, and a dedicated, hardworking teacher in every classroom. Why not classes? Uh, it's the truth of physiology that about one in four children will need glasses naturally. Whether from a family with means or a family who are struggling to get by, about one in four children need glasses. If we took a tour and visited school classrooms in low-income communities around the country, we'll find most children don't have the glasses they need. Due to language barriers, financial constraints, uh, just the lack of agency, or the mere fact there may not be an eye clinician uh, in the neighborhood. Vision Learn started about a decade ago with a simple premise, let's bring the service to where the children are every day at their local neighborhood school, a boys and girls clubs, or yes, a community library. Uh, we have now helped provide about 2.6 million kids across the country with vision screenings and provided glasses to close to half a million children. And guess what? Intuitively, obviously, it works. Uh, Johns Hopkins studied the work of Vision to Learn over a course of about four years, many thousand children. Uh, those children helped the most were children in the bottom quartile of their class academically and those identified with learning differences and disabilities. These children in elementary school gained, on average, four to six months of learning, meaning a second grader, second and a half, second and a half, third grade. Four to six months uh, for an early learner is an extraordinary amount of time. Now, all of you who work in libraries understand the importance of early literacy. A child learns to read so they can read to learn thereafter. Uh, there's a ton of research that if a child's not at grade level by third or fourth grade, the rest of the journey is going to be a struggle because they're trying to catch up what reading is all about. Meanwhile, their peers and classmates are reading to learn. So it's essential we provide everything a child needs to succeed at the earliest age. And guess what? That includes glasses. What we've done is set up an approach in a way by bringing the service to where the children are at schools uh and libraries uh, we can make sure no child truly gets left behind uh, when we provide service we'll make sure every child in a school or library has a vision screening those children who don't pass the vision screening provided with an exam they get to pick out a pair of glasses that they like all at no cost to the child and family uh, we're delighted to work with our library partners we now serve children in eight states and libraries uh, california connecticut delaware Maryland, North Carolina, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And I want to highlight our first program partner in Cobb County, Helen Payne, I'm sorry, Helen Poyer and Tom Brooks, who in 2018 approached us and said, could you work with us in summers? 
The same children in our public schools come to our libraries in summers, and Cobb County has a superb program in summers. Uh, and since then, we've helped more than 2,000 children in the Cobb County area with the help of our partners. Uh, this is a program we'd like to expand. We know it works. Uh, and we know uh, for a program like Vision Learn, which is set up to provide children what they need by meeting them where they are, and in this case, quite literally, uh, it's at their neighborhood school or their local public library. So we're delighted to be here today. We're delighted to be recognized, but this is really a team victory, if you will. Uh, we work alongside our library partners uh, who help make sure children get all the services they need, uh, not just a wonderful book uh, and a journey of learning, uh, but uh, a pair of glasses. Um, I think some of you appreciate part of the origin story for Vision to Learn came from my understanding as a child in a, a small town where the highlight of my month was the bookmobile from the public library, which would come visit. My mom, who was a school teacher, would come with me uh, because kids could only check out three books, but adults as many as they wanted. And as an avid reader, as long as my mom was with me, we could check out a whole mess of books. And what we've done is kind of take that same model to eye care uh, and health services for children. We bring it to where the kids are. Uh, so whether it's a bookmobile program in libraries or actually uh, the bricks and mortar libraries where our program partners work, we're really privileged to work alongside all of you and a special shout out to our partners in Cobb County for bringing us this idea and working alongside of us as we build and build and build. We look forward to many more great things to come. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Oh, and thank you again, Mr. Butner, uh, for, for joining with us um, and sharing those remarks. Um, and again, uh, just to emphasize what Mr. Butner said, uh, Vision to Learn is a national organization, uh, and, and they would be delighted to hear from, from any and all of you uh, if you would like to try to uh, bring this to your community to close the eyeglasses gap. Uh, and with that, um, I want to transition to announcing the 2023 awardees. Um, and so just a, a quick uh, nuts and bolts about this process. Um, nominations were open from June 1st uh, to August 30th, 2023. Uh, in the first year, we received 55 nominations from 22 states, uh, including all major regions of the United States with an almost equal mixture of urban, suburban, small town, and rural libraries. Uh, and the final list of 10 awardees was informed by our desire to have geographic diversity, um, a range of partners that had worked uh, for an extended period of time uh, with libraries uh, with a multitude of impacts um, and really looking for partnerships where there was mutuality. So um, the library benefiting, the partner benefiting um, and, and taking place at a multitude of locations. Um, so the nomination pool was so rich uh, that in the end, we could not restrict ourselves to only celebrating 10. Um, and to that end, we also celebrate honorable, honorable mentions in three categories, local nonprofits, uh, local government and business, and affiliates of state and national organizations. And after we announce uh, the 10 award winners, um, we will also celebrate those honorable mentions. Um, and just, uh, just a quick uh, note before we begin uh, celebrating our 10, 10 award winners. Um, uh, when e we have one slide for each of our 10 award winners, um, and we would welcome anyone uh, on the call to uh, celebrate uh, when, when your, your organization or your community uh, is featured on the slide. Um, feel free to hoot and holler. <laughs> um, we have, uh, everyone has the ability to unmute, uh, but we also ask uh, that you, you when, when your organization is not being featured, uh, to please be, be mindful of the audio and and mute at that point. Um, so without any further ado, um, we first have six nonprofits um, from uh, Kansas, North Dakota, New Jersey, Virginia, Arkansas, and Georgia by way of California. Uh, and we'll now share with you a little bit about uh, these six. Um, and again, you can learn more about all of these amazing community partners uh, at our webpage. And so first we have uh, the Community Action Thrift Store, uh, which was nominated by e Erie City, Kansas Public Library Director Julie Kent uh, for its work uh, to connect library patrons and the community at large with critical resources in this small town of 1,100 people. 
Uh, Julie Kent wrote that uh, as the library has become the hub of the community, we often know about families that may need clothing or food, uh, so we can call the thrift store if a specific need arises. And Kent shared the example of how during summer 2023, the library was visited by two men who were part of a 5,000 mile multi-state bike ride sponsored by uh, the American Cancer Society, the Wounded Warrior Project, and the Longest Day Project of the Alzheimer Association. Uh, the two men came to the library to cool off, drink some coffee, use the internet, and rest before continuing their long trip on their way to Florida. Uh, Kent discovered uh, by talking to them that during an overnight stay on a campground, someone stole their backpack containing their food, their clothing, their shoes, and the socks. They literally only had uh, the plastic sandals that they had in their tents. Kent called uh, the Community Action Thrift Store, uh, and the thrift store graciously offered to help them get clothing to continue their trip. And this is just one example of how the library uh, and the all-volunteer thrift store, uh, with some of the volunteers uh, pictured here, have worked together and continue to work together to support uh, everyone who works, lives, or even passes through uh, the small town community of Erie, Kansas. Congratulations, Community Action Thrift Store. Next, uh, we want to celebrate uh, Dr. Laura Munsky um, of the Dakota Science Center uh, in Grand Forks, no North Dakota, uh, which was nominated by librarians uh, in that community for nearly 15 years uh, of working together to increase uh, access to STEM learning opportunities. Uh, Dr. Munsky and the library have also worked together to share their STEM learning model with public librarians uh, across the state of North, Car North, North Dakota, paying it forward. Uh, Wendy Wendt, uh, the library director, said that Dr. Munsky is our strongest partner and serves as a collaborator, a connector, a mentor, and a teacher. Uh, beginning in 2009, uh, Dr. Munsky um, and the Grand Forks uh, Public Library's Children's Librarian, Aaron Stefanik, who is on the call, uh, thank you, Aaron, collaborated on a STEM project for the library that would be so popular that it continues to this day. In total, Dr. Munsky received four in-depth nomination letters from four different members of the Grand Forks Public Library staff, which is a testament to the richness and impact of this partnership, which has opened doors to so many in this community. Congratulations, uh, Dr. Munsky. Next, we want to celebrate uh, the Holly City Development Corporation, which was nominated uh, by Millville, New Jersey Public Library Director Courtney Reese, uh, pictured here on the right, um, for, among other things, their successful six-year uh, community collaboration focused on creating uh, an annual Play Street celebration in which the library, the Holly City Development Corporation, and, and dozens and dozens of other partners uh, work together to create a yearly summer event that closes the street of traffic to open the street for a day of play. Uh, more recently, the partners have worked together to secure uh, $1,170,000 in both state and federal funding to support the expansion and renovation of the 1965 existing library, which is located in one of the poorest districts in New Jersey. The mission of the Holly City Development Corporation is to inspire and empower neighborhood change through economic development, housing, and community development. It does so through community collaboration, community planning, and community action. And over the years, the public library has been consistently at the table. We commend Holly City Development Corporation and its executive director, Heather Santoro, for this work. Congratulations. Uh, next, um, we want to celebrate uh, the Stop the Violence team, which was nominated by Sierra Thals, project coordinator at the Adult Services Division of Norfolk, Virginia Public Library for their work to spread awareness about um, and to stop the senseless acts of violence in this community. To commemorate Juneteenth in 2023, uh, the library sponsored its annual festival, um, which was made more successful due to a collaboration with uh, Stop the Violence team, uh, who helped the library coordinate a community parade. 
uh, Thal's notes that through networking and established relationships, uh, we were able to bring together many local organizations, neighborhood residents, and even our very own Norfolk City Councilman, um, John E. Page. It was truly a sight to see watching dozens of people coming up the street, chanting to the rhythms of the drums. This event brought over 700 people together. It was such a success that the community is already inquiring about next year's uh, festivities. Congratulations. And next, uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Tony Faiz Kayat, um, and, and a big uh, congratulations to, to him and his community. I know we have uh, a lot of people uh, logging in from Mountain Home, Arkansas. So I want to thank you all for, for logging in for this ceremony. Um, uh, Mr. Kayat was nominated by uh, Donald W. Reynolds Library Director Kim Crow for nearly 30 years, 30 years of volunteering uh, his time to teach free yoga classes at this library for over 750 students ranging in age from 18 to 94. Uh, and Crow points out that this is especially notable since Mountain Home, Arkansas has only 13,000 residents. Uh, Tony accepts small donations uh, for his classes, which he in turn hands over to the library. And through this uh, gesture, um, his classes have raised $80,000 for the library. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes. Congratulations. Absolutely. Yeah, very, very well, well deserved. Um, and in addition to a letter from the library director, uh, Mr. Kayat was nominated by former and current students for his dedication uh, to the library and to the community. Uh, and library director uh, Kim Crow Sheener uh, said, seldom does a library partner like Tony come along. Someone so talented, dependable, and inspirational. We realize how fortunate we are to have enjoyed such longevity with Tony and that he has chosen, chosen to devote himself to the library and to his students. We look forward to many more years of his classes. Um, and again, uh, what an honor, almost 30 years. Uh, very, very sincere congratulations. And this was one that was especially uh, meaningful to me to read about um, for its longevity and impact. So, so congratulations. And finally, um, yeah, yes. And finally, um, <laughs> yes, yes, and I see Mr. 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 Kayak coming up. Yes, congratulations again. Um, and finally, um, in the nonprofit category, we we want to uh, uh, celebrate Vision to Learn. Um, and just to reiterate, uh, Vision to Learn was nominated by Tom Brooks, a communications specialist at Georgia's Cobb County Public Library for its work across America to provide children with free vision screenings, eye exams, and glasses. Um, uh, in, in Cobb County alone, uh, the library has worked with Vision to Learn since 2018. Um, and in 2023, the partnership locally enabled 694 children to receive eye exams, uh, including 484 who returned to school with new eyeglasses. Um, uh, and we can't, uh, and we hope many of you will reach out to Vision to Learn after today's event. They they can't wait to hear from you. So that that concludes the the local not or the the nonprofits, and we also want to uh, award uh, four government agencies and their affiliates uh, um, uh, for their work with public libraries um, from Oregon, Ohio, uh, Indiana, and Connecticut. Um, and so we will jump right in uh, with our first government agency and affiliate uh, being the Child Care Resource uh, and Referral uh, of Washington County, Oregon, um, which was nominated by three public librarians who have worked with this organization to quote, remove access barriers to early child, to, to child care provider trainings, end quote, um, is Julie Handyside, early childhood outreach librarian at Cedar Mill Community Library puts it. Notably, this organization invited public library staff to join them on the planning committee for uh, a child care provider mental health summit, um, which you can see pictured here, where public library staff had the opportunity to network both with uh, other child care providers while also attending trainings on self-care and mental health. 
Uh, Handy side summed it up by saying uh, that the child care um, uh, resource and referral of Washington County are, quote, champions of child care providers in the important work that they do. Uh, their staff, um, oops, excuse me, are a vital community collaborator, um, including through child care prov provider training offered at public libraries. And their nomination included a child care provider a training attendee, uh, Rachel Sue, who added that uh, the training at the library uh, has been a valuable service for me. During the pandemic, uh, they continued classes and helped me through it. Um, and through this partnership, um, this has helped me with my, my goals of supporting uh, education and child development. As a library patron, they encouraged, supported, supported, and trained people like me who have gained skills to provide a better learning environment for children. Congratulations. What? Yes, absolutely. Uh, woo. Um, next, uh, moving uh, to Ohio, the city of Chillicothe uh, Transit Department uh, was nominated by James Hill, uh, the library's executive director, for the work the library and the transit department have done uh, to fully integrate the public library into the community's transit system, including designating a portion of the library's parking lot as a transit hub, complete with a main library bus stop bench shaped like an open book. Hill notes that as the library was struggling to increase foot traffic after the pandemic, having the built-in bus audience has been a boon to all. And as a result of this partnership, since January 2022, all of the city's bus routes start and stop at the main library. Previously, the routes uh, terminated at the transit office, which is a nice building, but it's also located in an isolated part of the city. Riders now come from uh, daily routes to um, sometimes for hours, um, they have to wait uh, and, and they can now do so in a location that has free Wi-Fi um, uh, and they can come inside to browse the stacks, read a newspaper, hop on a computer or even explore downtown while waiting for their next connection. What an amazing collaboration, congratulations. In Columbus, Indiana, the Department of Parks and Recreation uh, was nominated by staff uh, from the Bartholomew County Library for the work they have done together uh, to create a permanent wheelchair accessible story walk, um, a come out and play initiative, which is a free supervised uh, summer camp uh, on summer weekdays from 1 to 4.45 p.m. and a farmer's market program. Uh, and Sandy Allman, a uh, community outreach librarian, said, quote, I highly value collaborating with uh, Columbus Parks and Recreation Department. Over the years, many staff members there, especially Jacob Hendricks, have gone, abo gone above and beyond to foster a relationship between Parks and Recreation and the library. Jacob ensures that participants in park programs know where the library is, how to use it, and they also assist uh, in the library's summer reading program. Through this partnership, the library in summer 2023 visited uh, recreation sites for story time in the park, come out and play, and special events uh, such as the Summer Carnival and Harry Potter birthday party on 12 occasions, distributing over 600 free books uh, to the youth of the community who otherwise would not have access to literacy opportunities. Congratulations for an amazing partnership. And last, but certainly not least, um, we want to commend uh, Hartford, Connecticut Public School. Um, yes. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. Yay! Yes. <laughs> So great to see um, all these all these youth uh, join join the Zoom. Um, what a wonderful site! Um, so congratulations, Hartford, Connecticut Public School, um, which was nominated by Brenda Miller, uh, Executive Director of Culture and Communications, um, for the Boundless Program, a program a partnership that involves library staff working closely with school staff to address e equity gaps in the educational system. Hartford Public School Superintendent, Dr. Leslie Torres Rodriguez uh, said, we are thankful to our partners in learning at the Hartford Public Library for working beside us, shoulder to shoulder to increase educational access for our beautiful and capable students. This is truly an amazing uh, partnership initiative and I cannot give full justice to it right now, but I, I really encourage you to learn more um, on our website. Um, 
Uh, as a result of this rich multifaceted collaboration, uh, the community has seen rising reading levels, uh, they've lowered learning losses, and they have supported both Hartford Public Library and Hartford Public School strategic priorities, including an increased use and awareness of library resources. The partnership is itself boundless, with library and school staff working regularly to fine tune and expand the model based on the evolving relationships that are at the heart of this collaboration. And I would also like to say that Hartford Public Library is also a partner of Vision to Learn. Um, so <laughs> wanna, wanna also uh, celebrate that fact as well. So congratulations, Hartford Public Schools, Hartford Public Library, and congratulations to, to the city of Hartford. And, and now I want to transition. Uh, again, we received so many amazing nominations. Uh, it was it was a truly a, a painstaking process to only celebrate 10. Um, and we want to now um, acknowledge some of our, our honorable mentions and what they've been able to do in collaboration with others. Um, uh, so in Arkansas, Batesville uh, Help and Hope uh, has delivered $10,000 worth of food and beverages to the Independence County Library, having an especially huge impact on the library's ability to support local teenagers in the library's Can Teen program. In Pennsylvania, Child Hunger Outreach Partners of Tawanda has distributed more than 37,000 free snacks to food insecure youth, including driving 110 miles one way to one of the library's more remote locations uh, in the Seneca District Library. In Conway, Arkansas, the first United Methodist Church has worked with Faulkner County Library to provide up to 120 free lunches daily during the summer working closely with the library to customize this feeding program to the needs of the community. Virginia's uh, Grove Christian Outreach Center worked closely with, with the Williamsburg Regional Library on its Spanish language program, Cena Con Cuentos. The library's Desiree Parker said that the Grove Christian Outreach Center is an exceptional longtime partner that has consistently demonstrated an unwavering commitment to collaborating with our library. Also in Virginia, Healthy Chesapeake works with the Chesapeake Public Library on a wide variety of food and nutrition programs, including a new library garden that opened in 2022. In New Hampshire, uh, Michael and Kathy Neary of Distant Hill Nature Trail have worked with the Walpole Town Library on a community story walk for over three years which not only serves the local community, but also operates as a beacon, pulling people from across New England uh, into this community. And finally, Whiskers uh, Trap Neuter Return or TNR of Warren County, Iowa has worked with the Norwalk Easter Public Library on everything from the library's Cat Cafe to a Cat Day program series, and even has helped out with the library's fundraising. Lib nominator Library Director Gene Strebel writes that the library and Whiskers have combined our efforts to serve our community to make the world a better place for humans and for felines. Moving now uh, into honorable mentions in the government and business uh, category, we want to commend uh, Amanda Hurley of Shelby, Shelby County or Shelby Soil and Water Conservation District, pitch, pictured here on the upper right, um, for um, for her work uh, with uh, the Shelby County Libraries um, on a series of hugely impactful conservation and environmental education programs, including the Plant the Seeds to Read initiative. Um, also in Ohio, uh, the Centerville uh, Washington Park District works with the Washington Centerville Public Library on a robo robust joint programming that includes everything from nature walks to book discussions, poetry walks, haunted trails, and even a race to the holidays 5K. Uh, Michigan's downtown Bay City works with the Ellis and Jack Wirt Public Library to help the library have an active presence downtown including through storefront story walks, uh, story times at coffee shops, um, and generally serving as a conduit to the local business community. Georgia's Elevate Farms, LLC, works with the Fayette County Public Library in Georgia to start the county's first seed library, distributing over 200 seed packets the first year. 
Um, and I, I now want to make a special shout out to uh, Fleet Fleet of Montclair, New Jersey, which for 15 years uh, has worked uh, with uh, the Montclair Free Public Library on everything from a no boundaries 5, 5K training class to special programs in collaboration with other groups, uh, including a Black Man Run that highlight the intersections of restorative justice, diversity, uh, and access to running. Uh, Jasmine Brown of uh, the Last Day Market, Virginia, pictured here um, underneath uh, the Fleet Feet logo, um, has worked with the Craig County Public Library to make sure that everyone in, the, in this rural community has access to social space, literacy, and a vibrant community full of fun and life. Also in Virginia, the Nottoway County Public Schools works with the Nottoway County Library on unique programs uh, with all five district schools. Library Director Jacqueline Zadoweski says this partnership helps them reach the county's young people where they are in school, while at the same time providing students with access to print materials and awareness of electronic resources that they otherwise would not have. Earthbeat Music, uh, formerly Rural Soul, Soul Music Studio uh, in New York, um, uh, with uh, their director pictured here in the lower right, uh, works with Saratoga, Saratoga Springs Public Library to bring to this community West African drumming and BIPOC teachers who pass along the meaning, stories, and rich history behind West African customs and tradition. The Iredell County Partnership for Young Children uh, here in North Carolina works with the Iredell County Public Library on story walks, uh, a loads of literacy program at local laundromats, as well as generally connecting library staff to a broad range of organizations focused on improving the lives of ch children and families. Uh, the Ross County Health District in Ohio has worked with the Chillicothe and Ross County Public Library, who we learned a little bit about earlier in collaboration with the Transit Department. Uh, this library also works with their health department on everything from bicycle lending to naloxone training, as well as a community garden, and the hiring of a peer support staff person to work with patrons who have substance abuse disorder. It's a rich partnership that Library Director James Hill anticipates will continue to grow. And finally, uh, in the category of government and business, we want to commend Virginia's Valley Program for Aging Services, with work, which works with the Waynesboro Public Library on increasing outreach and programming for older patrons and their caregivers, including helping the library become a dementia-friendly library. Congratulations uh, to you all. And we want to close out our honorable mentions by celebrating um, affiliates of state and national organizations, particularly in our cooperative extension uh, system. You'll see quite a few uh, extension partners highlighted here <laughs> in Virginia, Illinois, North Carolina, Florida, Mississippi, Michigan, Oregon, and Ohio. Um, in, in Virginia, the Amelia County Extension Office works with uh, the James L. Hamner Public Library on summer programs that include everything from archery to succulent terrarium design. Uh, Birth to Five Illinois Region 39 works with the Mount Zion District Library to help the library connect with other organizations to bring information to families and children uh, on what services groups and other things are offered within the community uh, Carolyn Ingram, a volunteer with the North Carolina State Extension Master Gardener Program and pictured here on the slide, works with the Gaston County Public Library uh, to start a seed bank uh, coupled with education focused on increasing uh, accessibility of gardening uh, across this county. Also, uh, similarly, uh, the, the D-Land Garden Club and the University of Florida Master Gardener Program has also worked with uh, the D-Land Regional Library to start a successful seed library in which the three partners divvy up the work to, to ensure long-term sustainability. Excel by Five, uh, a statewide nonprofit in Mississippi, works with public libraries across the state um, and was nominated by staff across the South Mississippi Regional Library for its work to provide free training for early childhood educators, including connecting public libraries to this work uh, in very powerful ways. 
Next, we want to commend uh, Jacqueline Jacks Christian of the Michigan State University Extension, who has worked with uh, the Detroit Public Library in Detroit, Michigan, on nutrition education offered across the city and over 10 branches um, since 2015. Uh, moving to uh, Oregon, uh, Melissa Pebley, Pam Groves, Crystal Lohman, and M Myra Gonzalez of Portland, Portland State University have worked with the Hillsborough Public Libraries uh, on developing literacy activities to better prepare children with disabilities for kindergarten. The focus on universal design for learning has led to inclusive story times that have increased the reach and impact of this public library. And finally, we close out our honorable mentions with the United Way of North Central Ohio, which has worked with the Busiris Public Library for the past nine years on a hugely impactful music, mu movement, and more program, which has reached more than 12,000 participants. Barbara Scott, Children's Librarian, states, I am eternally grateful for the continued support that United Way of Crawford County gives our music movement and more program and look forward to a great partnership for many years to come. And that that concludes our, our formal ceremony. And again, uh, I have really only scratched the surface in terms of what these incredible community collaborators have done with public libraries uh, in these communities across 22 states. Um, and so to read about all the winners, uh, please go to letsmoveinlibraries.org uh, slash partner hyphen award. Um, and last but not least, uh, please join us in 2024 and beyond. Um, our long-term vision uh, is to really uh, celebrate uh, the incredible uh, accomplishments uh, that occur when, when community uh, partners of all types uh, work in, in tandem with public libraries um, to increase access um, to all the things that we know communities need um, to survive, thrive, uh, and grow into the future. So we will be opening our call for nominations in June 2024 with the nomination period closing September 1st, 2024. Uh, awardees announced October 1st uh, with an award ceremony in November 2024. And, and thanks to everyone uh, who made this happen. And special thanks to Chloe Lanham for helping out on the back end. And we hope to see you all next year. Um, and I am now going to turn off the recorder.